Osiris. So, uh, I, I know that this looks like an intimidating piece. So one of the things I'm trying to teach you as drawers and artists, visual artists, is to break things down into kind of doable pieces. So I want you to watch this as I start to break this down. I want you to notice a couple of things. I'm not going to fully grid this. I'm just going to find the halfway point. I'm going to divide it into quarters. So as always, and I'm not going to require that you have a paper of a particular size, but it should be rectangular in shape. And uh, let's see, 4.2. Uh, yep. Uh, and uh, I have a point here. Don't worry, I'll get to it. <laughs> Eventually, I get to it. Um, I just kind of want you to start to understand compositionally how much, how light and dark kind of interact. Hi, guys. Sorry. Oh, Leon escaped. Leon, trouble. And he's still out. Oh, are you worried about him? Trying I left the gate open, which seems to be the best way for him to come back. If I chase him, he always yeah. outruns me. Yep, I gotcha. All right. So I want you to look at this piece in segment, in sections, right? We've got these quarters. And notice how the light areas, this is particularly true with, um, I'm gonna do some things that are gonna feel kind of weird, but I want you to follow me. Notice how the skyline, this kind of light area piece comes in, right? So I've just divided, oops, hold on, sorry. There we go, let's see, I wonder if I can, Let me see if I can bring this up a little bit so you can see it even better. There we go. So notice, I just went right through this walkway, right? Because I want you to be able to, as you're breaking things, as you're, as you're drawing, you're kind of breaking things apart and putting them together in different ways. So you're not going to need much detail to make this piece work. So now I'm sort of sketching out the light areas. Also, let's schedule. There's a tiny, there is a car in here. There's also a vanishing point out there. So I'm kind of sketching the lines. This is how I, as an artist, start thinking about my piece. So we've got these I'm just looking to see if there's anything else, if I'm missing anything as we start to go in here. And then I guess we can sketch out these as well. Right? We have these. Yeah. We've got these like sections, these pieces. We've got the road, right? There's a car on the road. Notice I haven't even sketched the car out. I'm just kind of trying to show you the bigger pieces. We've got the road. We've got the building line on this side. We've got the, uh, the um, sidewalk on this side. We have the building on this side. And then we've got this kind of chunk. Uh, this is kind of a, like a third of the composition is white, right, from the sky or light. It's got dark in it, but it's basically kind of a light piece. So as we start to sketch, the, I'm starting with these bigger overall shapes. As Does that make sense to you guys? I mean, it might seem like nonsensical, but actually what you'll start to get as you get more into drawing is an organic feel of what are the bigger shapes that I need. And one of the things I think that's helpful about this grid is you can kind of see how much pieces, different pieces take up and where they live. So the road and everything is um, in the bottom half, right? And um, the building kind of 
comes down like this, and we've got the sky mostly in this left top quarter. So how does this apply to what we're going to be doing? Here, let me take a picture of this so you've got it. I have a question. Sure. I was trying to practice drawing, believe it or not, and I couldn't, where do you know where to start the point if you've got some, a face, a couch? I think I was sketching my couch, a couch, or how do you know where to start it? Where this, do you go? Where you start it, you start with the bigger outside shapes. You so what does that mean though? Okay, mom, I'm, I'm, I'm back. If you're drawing a face, it means the outside shape of the head. If you're drawing a street scene, it means the street and the sky and the building outline of the building shapes before you get into any details within. You find the biggest shape, you go to the outside shapes first, and then you okay. go in to get your detail. It's not intuitive. Intuitively, when people draw a face, they want to go right to the eyes and start drawing. And in fact, I, 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 most people teach, that's, the, that's how most people teach themselves how to draw. And the yeah. problem with it is that we make things too big. So if you start from the middle and you work out, you've, you've, by the time you figure out you've got something in the wrong place, right. you move it, it's too late. So my, so this is the same thing that we're talking about, Osiris, which is like, I'm like, okay, here's the sky quadrant. Here's the building quadrant, because these buildings are all attached together. Here is the uh, sidewalk and the street. We start with these bigger shapes before we get anything in the middle. So, and then that keeps us kind of in bounds so that we don't, when we have to start correcting, because we will have to correct, that's part of the drawing process, we kind of know where the pieces are. So this may seem like a weird way to think about this building, but really I'm thinking about it. What I'm doing really is dividing up this cityscape into areas that are in varying levels of closeness to us. So actually, technically, I should do this here, right? That should come across just so we have it. So this part is the closest street, and here is the closest to us, and the sidewalk here. Um, the sky is the farthest away. These buildings are kind of middle distance, and then this is kind of, it's not exactly for, it's kind of middle distance as well, this little walkway. So that's how I, that's how you kind of start to think about buildings. Now, if you're working in charcoal like I am today, you're going to have newsprint. I think this is ideal as a charcoal exercise. So if you've got it, I'd love you to, and this is a nine by 12 inch or eight and a half by 11, nine by 12 inch piece of uh, newsprint. You could go bigger, 12 by 16 if you wanted to. Um, and notice I'm doing what's called toning the paper with the side of the, I think all of you guys know about charcoal, right? You know not to use compressed charcoal. You know what you want is the very light stuff. The compressed charcoal like this, you can't get rid of, which is really dark. You can't really get rid of that. So you don't want to put that in until you know, till the very end when you know where things are. Um, so I think in general, what I want to tell you about drawing is that it is not instinctual for the brain to divide things up into bigger quarters like this, but it is helpful for you to start thinking about this because then you can deal with each piece separately. Things get confusing when you're like, what do I do with this sky bridge, right? Which is kind of busting right through my middle ground and my background. Um, so, so what I'm kind of trying to teach and what I think this does in a nice way, here I've got a new needed eraser. So when I start, we're gonna start drawing with an eraser. We're gonna start kind of, I guess what I want you to see is once we get these pieces, you'll be very surprised at how quickly things fall into place. I don't expect you to do all the detail, but I love the way this is lit. I love the way it's kind of happened like a, half in darkness and half in light. So when I say drawing is like breaking things apart and putting them back together in different I notions, this is what I'm, this is what I'm talking about, right? Thinking about the bigger pieces 
And I will tell you, it did not, although it did not come naturally after 20 years, it does come naturally. I can't imagine anybody doing it any differently. Um, because to me, this helps me. I have a confidence that at this stage, things are in the right place. So that when I start making corrections, you know, I feel like, okay, I've got this. So I'm just very briefly with my, with my eraser marking, I'm gonna mark in the quarters. Jackie's like, thank God she's using a grid today. <laughs> I'm, I'm even, I've got a little thin eraser. I'm using it like a pencil because yeah, yeah, you can totally use it. You can totally use it like a pencil. That's great. Yeah, this is a nine by 12. My, um, my uh, source is actually a little bit smaller than that. It's eight and a half by 11, but I think we're, we just kind of are using this loosely in a quarter system. So once you have this, right. Then you can do, I can start to do, I'm just gonna ignore the sky bridge for now. I can start to do this. So I'm starting by sketching out my light areas and I'm using my grid. So it looks like I'm going pretty fast, but actually I'm just, I'm, I'm better these days at like kind of finding where the line crosses here let me one second i'm going to send this over so you guys have this it's a little tricky to see there we go and i think charcoal like really serves us well here so you can see here i'm drawing this line i'm ignoring this bridge completely i'll add it in but later i'm coming over here and if you're feeling like, ah, this doesn't feel right, that's okay. It's not supposed to. It's a different way. You're training your brain to think in a different way. You're training your brain to think visually. And that is a very, it's, a, it's, it's um, actually, it's quite logical when you start to get into it. It really is. Sorry, I'm trying to get this like, straight in this. So I've got this kind of shape here. Now I'm going to, let's see. I can see that my sidewalk kind of goes from, I, it starts here, right at the corner. Oops, sorry, it starts here. Right where my center point is. And here, the other side of the street starts down here. If I wanna be like even particularly. Then of course, the vanishing point tells me that if I just draw these lines straight ahead, they will meet at a vanishing point, which is, look at this, basically kind of right under where the sky ends, right? So I don't really need to know, all I need to know is where these two things start. And then as I sketch up, which of course means the horizon line is about here. Right? Where these two meet. I don't know how much we're going to use the horizon line today, except that everything that's underneath, right, bends up, and everything that's above bends down. Does this all of a sudden feel a little bit more manageable? Just a little bit, or does it still seem really tough? Notice I'm not really worried about the car. I'm going to add that in later. The car, although it seems really big, is kind of part. So here I've got my buildings, the outline. I've got my outline of the street. I've got my outline of the light and dark of the um, of the uh, sidewalk. I know that um, my other edge of my sidewalk here where the building comes is gonna go to my same vanishing point. It's gonna meet here. So I just need to start it about here and just bring that line up. <clears throat> so before I get anybody any detail in, this is where I'm going. And the, let's put in the sky bridge. 
which is be confusing with the horizontal about up here. Kind of slants a little bit. As you can see, I'm sketching in my sky bridge now. Slanted up. So these are, this is how you start with drawing. These are the outer shapes. These are the bigger shapes. So now I know, okay, my sky bridge is containing here. Did I get that right actually? Yep. Yeah. So that's how we start with these bigger shapes. Is everybody already feeling a little bit better about this? <laughs> Just a tiny bit. Let me take a picture and then I'm going to stop. I want to see you see how well you see these structures. And if you're having problems, it's okay. This is intellectually a different way of thinking about. Uh -oh. I'm going to move this out. This is a different way of thinking about um, about uh, this is the sort of classic systematic way of thinking about drawing. This is the drawing system. This is the visual system. It has rules, but they're not rules you're used to understanding and following. You know, drawing is really a visual, like what I'm really teaching you is how to understand where things are on the, on the flat surface. I love the flat surface. I myself am not a, potter or a sculptor. I'm really not. I love the translation. Sorry, I'm just trying to get this. I love the translation that happens with the flat surface. That to me is really exciting. Um, but it means understanding there are rules to follow, right? So it sort of is after a while your eye and when we first look at things, we make them bigger. Mm -hmm. So then they should be. So actually, we always make things bigger than they should be. Even when we think we know what we're doing, we generally don't. Um, so, hi guys. Is that you? Hey. Guys? It's Diana. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Brittany. And Sunny. That soon that just found the beep toy. So I I I'm gonna turn off my sound. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. <laughs> As everybody knows, Diana is director of the LA Press Club in C and uh, in LA, almost said Seattle. Um, and uh, she's got a big. She's got her first in-person gala coming up um, on October 16th. So she's working very hard, and we don't see her as much. As you can imagine, trying to run an indoor in-person gala safely in this time really sucks. So it just requires a lot more work. It is a lot of work. A lot of work. There's a lot of unknowns, right? Yeah. <laughs> so notice how you guys, this piece of the sky in the background kind of relates to the walkway. And that's not a way you're used to thinking. People are, you know, um, <clears throat> when we look at something, we're not used to thinking about how the background interacts with the foreground, right? We're just looking at the thing in the front. We're not thinking about the thing around the edges. But in drawing and painting, the background and the foreground uh, are of equal importance and, and they come back and forth into importance as we start to work with them. I'm also trying to explain things that no one ever explained to me. So uh, I'm trying to explain things. To, when I first became an artist, I did not know any of these ideas and these terms. And I took drawing classes and my, and my teachers didn't tell me because they were so used to thinking like this, they couldn't even you know, break it down, if that makes any sense. So uh, I just want you to know, as I'm struggling to find the words to describe this, I may or may not hear it with you, but, um, but just keep part of this process is, is, is learning by doing, right? And learning as you lay something down, oh my God, I made that too big, or I made that too small, or I don't, you know, 
I have to not focus on this sky bridge right now. I'm focusing on the background, right? Even though the background is the background. In this case, we're going to start with the background once we get this sketch in. Oh, that's interesting huh? because, like, you know, when you like you put a hand in front of a face and you say you have to start with a hand first, but in this case, we have to start with a background. Well, yeah, in this case, what I was sort of showing Sandra, particularly because we're using charcoal, right, is that kind of this whole side is, is the lighter side. This is the darker side. How to see how those pieces fit together. Before. So it's difficult to position a bridge if it, you don't have the end bits. You, but it's pretty easy this way that we go. Watch, watch as right. we do this. Right. Tell me no, no, I mean, that's that. why you would do it for what you're doing. Yeah. You. Yes, Sandra and uh, Sandra and Diana can often help me with how to say it. <laughs> it's hard to know how to say it. I got my Leon back, by the way. Good. Of course. He I have to go get him. The, he won't go far from where the baked chicken is. Oh, I don't know, you know, it's so easy to go want to explore boys like explore further and further. You know, I'm glad you told me that because um, now Hermes really doesn't get to be um, outside unless he's in, he's contained in his catio. And I noticed that I, I sat and actually thought back on it after all the cats I've had and the two cats I've lost were both boys that like wandered up. It's funny, like over the years, I mean, you know, I'm like talking about like, 30 years of 40 years of having cats, like I'm like, oh, it's true. So this you is can go very far. my brother used to live in a village and used to let his cats out. And he had a male cat. And he so it was in a village and then in the countryside, but he he had been that cat had been seen near the motorway, you know, near the freeway that was quite far away. Yeah. And eventually he got run over. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it will happen. That's the thing. So um, go ahead and send me, guys, what you've got, this little structure. Or would you like me to do the next step so you can see what I'm, what I'm thinking about? I think this step would be a good way station. <laughs> OK, you want me to this one, stop here for the moment. Got it. Yeah. I'm also a little confused in your diagram as to which one is the, the middle line horizontally. Yeah, let me uh, get that. Let me get uh, the horizon line out. Because that's confusing me a lot. That can ah. a little bit too. I put it there so you can see, just know that right here, this point is the horizon line and then whatever's above it comes down to it, right? whatever is below it comes up to it. I agree, a little bit confusing. So Sandra, lion uh, escaped? Yeah, he escaped. He's almost escapes oh, every day. He's escaping. <laughs> We're back, back to square one because, I don't know, because the bushes have grown where the net was Let's see. behind the net and it helps him. He's not okay. afraid of the net somehow. But this, this is a wisteria, so it's very difficult to keep it in check. So I think I need to install a different kind of netting on that side isn't bad, um, but you did the same thing I did, which is put your top line too high. If you'll notice here, there needs to be a little bit of space 
So just bring this line down a little bit. I did the same thing. Mine went up here and then I noticed, uh, and then, then, yeah, other than that, that looks pretty good. Bettina, really good. I would say the same thing, Bettina. You probably, and notice also, you guys, that this kind of slants down slightly, not exactly straight. It's mostly straight, but it's not exactly straight. Um, I didn't, yeah, I noticed that, I, and okay. So you also put your uh, line up too high here, bring it down a little bit. So notice that the height, the, the, the vertical distance of this whole walkway, if I go up, there's still a little bit of sky left above. So it's a little bit bigger, a little bit taller, the sky part than the walkway. It's easy to make the walkway too big. I know mine's a little bit, here, I'll fix mine. Um, not bad, Osiris. Oh, and Osiris, you don't feel feel free to go even darker with your background if you want. You know, with the toning, you can go darker if you want to. Looks good though. Looks good. Um, let me. I'm gonna slightly bring it down. You guys are doing great. I have a question about what the. There's a side in the lower left quadrant mm -hmm. on yours. There's a, a slanting angle that's touching the left edge of the, that one. I don't, what is that from? It's uh, here, it's the other side of the street. Here, I'll sketch, I didn't sketch it in. God, you guys are so good. I so that's okay. Okay, and that goes to the vanishing point. That goes to the vanishing point. I wanna tell you how much I appreciate both Osiris's question, Jackie's question, and Bettina's question, because they're all very specific. You're not just like, I don't know what's going on. You're like, wait a minute, I don't understand this particular thing and what's happening here and what is that? It's great. It's really great. This is problem solving in action. I'm like so proud right now. <laughs> really proud. Okay, so Jackie, I would say the other thing, get, um, get rid of this line right on this side that yeah. you're going up because that's there is no yeah. yeah yeah yep and then notice that the light part comes a little bit below where the it ends here and yeah. a little bit below the point. i thought and, i had that and then i changed it uh, yeah, that's okay uh i'm looking at your yep good this looks good 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 uh, and all, yeah, actually everything looks good, really good. All right, so I'm going to move on to the next step, which is starting to erase out the lights. So remember, we're doing subtractive drawing here. So I'm working in this light area here. I'm going to go, I'm going to skip over the walkway for the moment. Come in here. Right, and then you can try to bring in a couple of the windows here. Not, I'm not getting into too much detail yet, but I'm just bringing in a couple of details in the walkway. And then I'm just, I think I'm gonna also put in my light here. Yeah, and use whatever you want to, right? I've got this light kind of shape. It's kind of light up here. If you want to, you can add in your little light street lights over here. You can see where they are in relation to the, if you want to, you can add those in. You'll probably need to go back to them later. But this is essentially the, um, where we'll, where we'll stop at this stage. Notice we, have, we still haven't put the car in, we will. But see how now all of a sudden I have this murky thing that goes back in space just by adding these two things. Just by adding these lights here, see how I now all of a have something that goes back, right? Uh, it's raining outside and Hermes is crying because he can't go out. He so wants to go out. It's miserable out there. You know what my brother's cats do? What? He's got like several windows, like several rooms giving onto a terrace. And when the cats want to go out and they see it's raining in, in one room, they run to the next room to see whether it's also raining out of that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, their whole concept of rain is different, isn't it? If it's been dark out. It's a whole different thing. And nowadays he doesn't let his cuts out. Right, he's learned. He's lost too many. And also he lives more in the city. Right. So, so, so what I want you guys to see here is this even just getting in these bigger shapes of light. Look at what that does to this composition. All of a sudden, I am now in a city that goes back. I don't have to do very much. I've just added in the light. And I think this is why, although this is not an intuitive process, right? Although people don't think this way, they generally have to be trained. This is the value of it. If you can think in the bigger shapes and pieces and the bigger lights and darks, then you don't get caught up in uh, all those windows and all this little person here and all these lines. You don't get caught up in that stuff because you don't need it. You don't need it. You might, if you're painting this as like a eight by 10 foot painting, yeah, you're gonna need more detail. But um, I find that this is, if you can get into this thought process, this area, so now we have our lights and really our midtones all kind of laid out for us. We haven't put our darks in yet. That's the next stage. Mister, come on. Come on. I know you're so bored. You're so bored. Come on. You're so bored. You want attention all the time. So bored. Come here. Come uh, I'll be right back. I actually really appreciate that about this beginning drawing class. I feel like this beginning drawing class, we can get into these ideas, which absolutely translate to painting. They absolutely translate over to painting uh, in a way that I can't even get into in painting sometimes. <laughs> so it's really cool to be able to, to break these concepts down. When you guys have got it, send it over. And don't rush. I'm doing a rapid. Yes. Not Sir Arthur, though. No, this is a, <laughs> Oh, but um, my friends whose cat I kept messing up have given me a great picture. So great. So you got it. Attempt, you know, sometimes you need to do that. I've had to do that on commissions before. I've had to say, this isn't working. Yeah, they liked uh, one of the ones I did. I mean, not the ones where the, in the shadows I kept messing up at one. Um, but now I think I can work with what they give me. So Jackie, this is a little bit wa wa waving too much. Yeah. And so make, this is straight. Yeah. Think about it like this. We're gonna break things down even more. Straight, right? Mm-hmm. Triangle. Okay. Right? Think about that shape a little bit more. Okay. And also, when you're doing this, don't like, these aren't exactly equal, right? I can see that with you, you've done that. Uh, but B, B, you've gotten a little more, it's okay right now, but be aware, these are not like kind of little, right, you'll get there. Oh, that's looking great, Diana. Background's still really working. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna see if I can get the cat to work totally as well. B, I'm going to tell you the same thing. Pay attention to this shape, which is really a triangle, and this shape is 
kind of a, you know, like get that in there. Which shape? I'm pointing. I can't see. Wait. I'm wait. not talking to you, Diana. I'm talking to B. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. You're fine. I gotcha. We got you. We got you. And you might be want to go heavily on top just so that you can really see that. Yeah, no, he's looking great, Diana. He's, you're getting him gray, but we've got all these nice purples and they'll, and you know, this is not exactly the colors of the cat, but that's great. Of course not. You know, of this course is not. artistic license. And I think it's just working really well. So you just keep layering the grays in, but let the pinks and the yellows and the purples and the blues show through. It's very, okay. very nice working. So, yes. Um, you guys ready for me to go to the next step or you want to wait a little bit? I can wait. I don't want to rush. Uh, I'm just ready to send it. Okay. Send it over. I'm trying to learn to pace it. <laughs> uh, it's hard not to go fast when you start to get into it. Looking pretty good. I'm just looking, Bettina, at all the things. Yeah, I'm looking pretty good. I mean, we're going to rework things in here a little bit, right? Um, so now I'm going to go in with my charcoal. Because we've got mid tones in, now we're going to start darkening areas that are super dark. I'm just looking to see where those areas are. So it's kind of the sidewalk right next to the street here. I'm going to add the street post in in a second, but see how I'm going heavily, more heavily, and I'm kind of softening with my hand. I can erase it a little bit with my finger too. And up here, it's darker. And without really getting into too much detail yet, Kind of darkening this. I'll get into more of the structure later, but I'm kind of darkening the isn't that amazing? Look what that does. I just never get over how uh, incredible this process is. How incredible the sort of subtracted process. I can see that this part of the street is darker. Sure, I know there's a car in here. We're gonna to get to that, but here, up here, everything's pretty dark. And of course, this is dark. 
kind of there's a dark bottom and a top. And then look what happens to your like little building midtones in the background here as we start to get to about here, things are pretty dark. Kind of neat, isn't it? See how these areas are starting to play with each other now. I know it looks kind of like stunted. That's all right. We're not quite there yet. I'm just trying to, to break down the thought process more than anything else. Uh, I'm just probably to about here. Things are darker. There are darks in here, but they're kind of interspersed. And I know this process, you know, I know it sounds like I'm making this easy, but this was not easy for me. Oh, that's looking good, uh, Osiris. Yep. Now just get your darks, now start getting your darks in, in the places where I have them. Um, and try, I mean, you know, you can tell yourself this is the sidewalk and this is the building, right? But here, the kind of darks sort of push up into here, like the building and the tree, they all kind of blend together. Anyway, this wasn't easy for me. Uh, it took me years to learn how to really do this. I freaking love this process though. It's, I just think it's magical. I think once you get into the, and notice we haven't really done any dark lines. I'm gonna go see if I can find one of Diana's cats from, did you paint on your cat last week, Diana, in this class? Uh, I don't remember. I don't either. I'm looking back to see if like- I, I can, can send an earlier. Can you send an earlier version so people can see like more of the light dark lock-ins with none of the details? Yeah. That would be great. I can do that. Sunny, can you leave me alone? Thank you. And that you think kind of works along with this example that we're doing. Also, what I love about charcoal is look at how much texture we're already getting just from, right? There's already a little bit of, if we were using a pencil, we'd have to add this all in. But with the charcoal, just as I'm laying down the dark, there's a kind of unevenness about how it spreads. It works really well. That's gonna work really well for us as we start to, to lay things in. Yeah, look at this. This is how Diana's cat started. Oops, there we go, I'm confusing my camera. If you look at this, you'll see how she's really just focusing on, this is how she started her kitty. The kitty that now looks like this, with more hard lines, right? Starts with these light and dark. She's that that's her map for putting in lights and dark. And notice how good this is, how much she gets like 90% of the expression, the values, all of it is in this area. The top layers are mimicking it or uh, emphasizing this, but look at that. And this is essentially what we're doing here. Thank you, Diana. No problem. Am I right? I'm right, right? Similar idea. It shows. I mean, she's used red and green instead of black and white, but it's still the same. Uh, painters and drawers uh, who are working representationally, actually, even if you're working abstractly, you do have an innate sense of lights. You're, you train in yourself an innate sense of light and dark, which is what this is. Bigger shapes first, 
smaller shapes within. Um, I am making myself a little cup of coffee, so. Sunny, you are you are in my way this morning. Yeah, I do. You're in my way. At the very end, I'll show you. I painted this um, scene, and I'll show you how I painted it. At the very end, I'll send that over so you can see how this translates to color and back. Hey, Diana, where's Christina this week? We haven't seen her at all. I don't know. Maybe she's working. Must be. Yeah. She has a tough job. She does. Uh, not bad, B. So you're um, just be careful not to. This is a straight line, right? You've got it kind of. This white line is kind of. Oh, yeah. Like that, right? That's a straight line. It's a pretty, pretty, just like on the other side. Right, cool. Coming along. I'm going to re sketch in my middle line. You guys can really see it for this next part. So I think the next part's going to be the tough. Probably shouldn't tell you that. But there you go. I'm going to catch it in with a little bit of charcoal. So I'm going to right now put in the middle line, you know, the, the sort of center of the grid, so that you can see it. Just adding it in. Kind of right. My dog is bothering me. Yeah. You're the one who decided to get a wild and crazy puppy. <laughs> that is true. Tina, that's looking pretty good. Get even darker in this on this side up here. You can get darker up here. You've kind of blocked it. Look at how this is a little bit darker, and then everything here. So this building can be darker, and then everything that goes back is lighter. You kind of go like this, right? Just everything that's from here in can be dark. You can add light back in, right? It's easy to do that. Good job. Good job, you guys. You're doing so good. Actually, what we're really doing here is growing a new neural pathway. And if you think about the neural pathways, for example, that you developed to learn to read and write, right? They took a long time. Oh yeah, Jackie, that's starting to look nice. Is it starting to kind of look, don't get too detailed yet here. But uh -huh. I, right, like, because yep. you're gonna need, we're gonna need to kind of grade these down. Don't get too uh, into the detail yet. Okay. 
is, but do notice there is a reason to make this whole thing darker than what's here. As things go back in space, they get lighter. So, and slightly bluer if you're working with, you know, realistic colors. So everything that's here, which is closer to us is darker. And then you can see, even if it's dark, the kind of dark sort of fades away a little bit into, I can see I need to you know, get more light in here. In October, we're gonna use ink. And an ink. We're going to use a pen and ink, so we'll talk about. Because it's Inktober. It's Inktober. That's right. That's right, baby. Inktober. Ink is the best. All right, is everybody ready? Do you want to, you guys want me to go move forward? Yeah. Now we're going to do kind of the trickiest part, which is the car. So if you remember, let's see if I can sketch out the car here for you. I'm going to do it in blue. So the car is in this quarter, this quadrant. I'm also, I'm not just sketching in the car, I'm sketching in the shadow as well. Because in a lot of places here, the dark, kind of the shadow kind of blends into the bottom of the car where the tires are kind of blends in. So here, I'm going to give these shapes. So now we get to practice starting with this bigger shape and then getting into the smaller shapes, mostly with your eraser. Or if you want to, you can use, I mean, let me see what the easiest thing to do here. You might be at a point. So you can see where it is, right? It's kind of contained in this box. So here's my edge of my line. I know, and here's my street. Things get erased, right? So here's my street. So I can see exactly at the halfway point. So I can see that like, if I'm sketching in my car, I can use, you can use the edge of your, Thing if you want, I kind of come up through the street, right? The street is here. And then over. Now remember, we had issues, you know, cars are tricky. So shapes just, what I wanted was something where the car was in, but not so dominant. That's not so bad. Notice the side of the car on our left is definitely darker and smaller than the back of the car. And then I can go back and forth with my darks. Oops, it's not good. With my darks and my lights.
see how I'm starting to kind of darken my car. And I'm lightening it. My eraser goes back and forth with my eraser. You want to use a pencil eraser. And really, all we can really see in the light is kind of the space between the tires and the shadow. So this car is like kind of super loose. This is going to take a little while. It also can help you to get these lights that are kind of um, underneath where the car shadow is. So getting some of these will help you. That's really where the headlights are, right? Isn't this a wonderful photograph? I can go back in around with more dark in between. I can get dark here. Look at how just getting these pieces, I'm gonna send this picture over to you. Where is this picture from? Uh, I don't know. It came from Unsplash and uh, um, uh, a guy named Joshua Hild took it and I don't know where he was. I'll see if I can find it though. And I'll see if I can tell you. By the way, Leo, I was looking at the Unsplash license yesterday. It doesn't say you have to credit them. It says it'd be nice to. Um, I do it because if I'm using anything where I'm making money, I think it's totally valid. Not risk. You know? I mean, that's nice to do, but I mean, you well, said, you know, you said in another class that you had to, but in fact. Well, I believe, in, okay. I, okay, you can do whatever you want. To me, it feels um, kind of morally wrong to take something. No, no, oh, okay, that's another matter. I, Right, that's, that's what, I, that, what I mean. But it's not a it's not a rule in the license whether you do make doing it commercially or not. Um, really, I thought yeah. it was. Well, anyway, better to think about it as it is. No, but it's nice to give credit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Right. I don't know. I think it's always a little bit, you know, because I'm running a business. I'm trying to. Uh, no, no, but if they're very specific, say whether it's commercial or not commercial. So they understand what they don't want is you to use like 10 pictures to create your own site, you know, like a knee. That means the advertiser could use it because there's some good stuff on there. Wow. Um, presumably, I mean, it's very explicit and it's very simple. The rules, like, yeah. the rules are the license, like the rules are like three lines. But all these people also advertise that they are available for hire. Yeah. I think they see it as a, as a, yeah, as a way to promote themselves to be there. And they say it'd be nice to, yeah. to credit them for this reason, yeah, uh, you know, so that they can promote themselves. But um, right. It's an interesting question, always copyright, right? But the license specifically is 
all photos can be downloaded and used for free, commercial and non-commercial purposes, yeah. no permission needed, in brackets, vo attribution is appreciated. That's it. Excellent. I like that. Well, that's good to know. Thank you for looking at that more closely. Um, but in, in any event, I still want to, I still want people. Yes, but yeah, and I totally agree with you. But that's another matter. It's not like you'd be sued if you forget. Yeah, 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 yeah. I agree. I agree we should. It's but... more to do that. You know, like, isn't it, it wasn't it the woman who um, just sued Kahinde Wiley for using his, her photograph for uh, Obama's portrait and not crediting her at all? I don't know. I'm sure it wasn't an unsplash. It, well, it wasn't an uh, unsplash article, but this point is the idea is that images are used all the time, yeah. and like, and people aren't aren't crediting when they should credit. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, shit, yeah. Andy Warhol. Like, you know, there's 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 a lot of interesting cases happening around this idea of because everything's so available. Well, no, unfortunately, yeah. Right? Yeah, it's like this whole new level of thing. Well, I tell you what they don't like. Photos cannot be sold without significant modification. Can you imagine somebody sells you a photo that's there for free? And then what they really don't want, compiling photos from Unsplash to replicate a similar or competing service. Oh, that's ridiculous. That's yes. very that's egregious. <laughs> And I'm sure that's been done. <laughs> there is like a Chinese version and a Russian version. And a... It's pretty magic though, because it's a very international site. So you get, oh, yeah. people, is... uh, you get these wonderful views of, you know, contemporary views of the world. And um, a lot are done on cell phones. So there's kind of, kind of this crazy elongating happening. Um, but like, it's, I don't know, like it's still, I, I, anyway, I just think it's, the, 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 they're, they're wonderful and kind of not American centric, which I really appreciate. That is very true. Right? I've it's many foreign magical. animals. It's pretty magical, some of the things they got going on. Yeah, I, I got, I got my Copenhagen picture from there. Yeah, they got some really great stuff. Oh, but you know, unfortunately, there's a huge advertising now because they were bought, right? Is it Getty that bought them? Oh, yeah. So I oh. wonder what happens. So now you have to be careful. You think you're looking at a free picture and it's not. Um, and Getty knows how to charge. Well, no, no, I think you can't be charged without your knowledge because they don't have your credit card, but, yeah. but it's annoying. You know, we we did a story in one of our uh, programs, our programs for the award show, which was, you know, uh, and we used uh, a picture from Huffington Post that we had permission to use mm -hmm. from Huffington Post. Really? But it turned out that Huffington Post didn't own the picture. That's, because that's stolen it. It was, well, it was an AGF picture and uh, they had a license, Huffington Post has had a license to use their pictures, uh, but we didn't have a license to use. That's that, the thing, but they're not creators really in terms of pictures, I don't think. No, so, so it, they... Pictures from sources like that, yeah. Yeah, but how we didn't know because it said Huffington Post, and we had the permission from Huffington Post. So, and it was a picture that was like it was just nice to have it because it was when we gave Charlie Hebdo the Daniel Pearl Award, mm -hmm. and so it was a picture of all the flowers outside the Charlie Hebdo headquarters. And I mean, I'm sure it's a picture we could have found elsewhere but it just happened to to be at the Huffington Post site and we got the permission so we ended up I mean we had we had to hire a lawyer and oh. we ended up having to pay like I 
$750 for a picture that was the size of an enlarged stamp in a Oh, room. wow. Yeah. I think uh, you have to go to, yeah, that's wrong. That's wrong. Yeah. Um, and they didn't I, care we were a nonprofit. I think it, I think you can't take pictures from sites like that because, it, like even. Uh, we, I mean, that's why we asked permission. <laughs> uh, they should have. They should have told you. Like they obviously yeah. don't know. I think it's what, a question. The person who gave it to you. It's a know. technical question too. That everything that's being exchanged digitally is tagged, and it's it's hard to get everything tagged. Right. Exactly. So, I know that uh, when we use, we send pictures, like, you know, now it's our job with send, to find like pictures, Reuters pictures to send with Reuters stories, almost every story. And uh, there's some pictures that we get from third parties and it will have in the caption, you know, not for resale, not for use, third party, like, um, and then you know, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. You can't touch this with a barge pole. Um, and, and it was, uh, and on top of that, it was like three years later that this happened, that they found the picture. Oh. God, Charlie Hebdo always just sends chills down my spine. Yeah. Even the mention of that name. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's never been going to be. We, we, had a, we had a couple of people coming in from, from Paris to accept the award. And, I don't think we get over that. Huh? I was reading about the woman who survived, you know, and she was forced at gunpoint to, because she walked out at the wrong time. So she was forced basically at gunpoint to let the killers in. Otherwise, like they would have killed her, right? So she let him, and you know, she can't forgive her. Like, she's like, I can't forgive her. Even though she was totally, her life was under threat. Yeah. She's the well, one. He just happened to be walking outside at the wrong time. I mean, uh, if she hadn't complied, they would have killed him, come in. Right, exactly. But, you know, you can still imagine the guilt. I mean, you know, Dean Yates talked about this when he was um, at Reuters. Uh, you know, his when he was in Iraq, his um, two oh, his colleagues, were, Iraqi yeah. uh, photographer and reporter colleagues, were killed during a friendly fire by US military, actually, unfortunately, during a really fucked up friendly fire accident. And uh, he says he still thinks about them all the time, those guys, that those deaths sent him to a psych ward twice. Because they trusted him and he sent him. Well, yeah, yeah. he took that seriously. And he said it was a really hard, Anyway, yeah, it's tough. I mean, Dean took that pain and he turned it uh, into these are classes. So he's the one who's responding. Dean Yates is the one, besides Janet and Gina, Dean Yates is the one who's responsible for bringing these classes as a mental health uh, thing for journalists. He could really see that that was valuable for people. Uh, did he ever make the classes himself? He, did, he did, you know, he never would, but he sat in on a bunch. He sat, whenever he was in New York, he would come and sit in on the classes in the office in the pre-COVID days. And he would buy everybody dinner and then he would fund them. Like, so he was the first one to put major, he's the first one to put major funding, like 10 or 10 or 15 grand into the pro. He was like, I'm putting 10 grand into this program. That's how much I like it, you know, from the mental health budget. So that's how the whole thing started, like in a bigger level, is he was like, this money has to go. This is a really important. He did a lot of other things at Reuters. He unfortunately left uh, because he didn't think Reuters was doing enough. Um, is that why he left? It was never very clear why he left. Oh, yeah, that's why he left. What a shame. Um, yeah. But he, but, you know, he left a great program in place. He left peer like you know counselors everywhere he kept he left like a lot of things that i can really see are not happening in other offices so well you know what if i can interject as a veteran we, we, the va started all the art programs you guys because so many of the vets were having problems 
the PT, I mean, I'm one of them, uh, the right. mental disorders that they started in art. I just got called to do a national festival for one of the VA programs yesterday. How wonderful. Through out of Florida. Because, the, the, because that we have to, otherwise I have to paint. I don't have an option. I have to paint every day or I go crazy. Yeah. I don't, you know, I don't, you don't have, you know, your mind is working and all that. And I've been beating the head. You talking about the girl with the gun held. I got gang raped in a Dempsey dumpster, a trash can and beat in the head and was told to either do what they told me to do or get killed. And I did whatever they told me to do. Of course. And it is, you have to live with it the rest of your life. Right. The rest of your life. And even though you go to therapy and all that, it's still, you have to learn to manage the pain and the memory of what happened and what happened to you. Exactly. Even though you're an adult, I mean, it happened to me in the military, I was a kid, but still, you know, it's in my book, I talk about this, how people think you just talk and stuff is going away and it doesn't do that. It sits inside of you. And yeah. some people are able to manage that thing they have in there. And some people, it drives them nuts and they get angry and start hurting people or themselves or whatever. So it's, you have to do it, you know? Yeah, how about, um, I, that is absolutely true. It's such an important point. And I'm sorry that happened to you, Osiris. You're making- That's oh, okay. Um, I was young, I didn't know him. It's all, it's all, uh, and, and when we talk about pain, there's all kinds of pain, right? There's the emotional and the, the mental pain of an experience like that. I just interviewed an artist who um, in Portland who uh, is a quadriplegic because oh, wow. a tree fell on her car oh. and, she, and it broke her neck, right? And so she has a little bit of mobility here with her arms, she can kind of lift them, but she paints with her mouth. And wow. I interviewed her lately because I was like, how do you do that? And she does really good paintings actually. And she said, you know, uh, I have to paint, it helps with the pain. Physically, it's a really it painful thing. So there's all kinds of levels of pain, right? There's like that physical pain. And I hear this over and over again, that if you have, if you can focus on art, it helps with the pain. Sandra just went through chemo. I'm sure it helped. I'm sure working on art helped with yeah, it. Yeah, right? Oh, yeah, like goes without saying, right? I, I, I don't mean to call you out, Sandra, or your experience, but like- no, Chemo, radiation, and two surgeries. Two surgeries. Oh, honey. Unexpected last, last, yeah, that were completely dumped on you last November? Last September, it's almost a year ago, actually. It's almost, almost a year ago. Yeah. Remember, I was, on, the, I was on, on one of your classes when I found out. Yeah, I remember. So there is, and so I agree with you. It's, but it's funny, Dean never did, he didn't think of himself as a drawer, but he was a massive advocate for the program. He loved it. Uh, he still does. Um, and, you know, interestingly enough, when we were talking at the beginning of the class about that circle, Dean uh, was one of those reporters that was in Hong Kong in the late 90s covering the handover to China. So we all knew each other from back in, we turns out we knew several people back in that, in that time period. It was kind of nice. Sometimes I really miss being a journalist. I miss the um, camaraderie and the, I don't know, the, you know, I like miss that. And I was like, oh, yeah, I had that once. <laughs> now I'm just in my studio working away. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, I can do without the deadline adrenaline. That's true. That's I, true. Ooh, I, Bettina, nice. B, not bad. Um, there's a little, uh, bring this out a little bit wider, B. Mm, yeah. And up a little bit higher, right? Yeah. Right? This is a, remember, look at, if you look at this side compared to this side, look at this side compared to this side. This side is half the size, half the size of this side. The, the back is twice the width of the front. Oh, yeah, mine's more square. Yeah, that's okay. You're just getting into it. Bettina, not bad. I see that the car things have really helped you. All right. So because a couple of you are there, I'm going to go forward. So you can see, I think you can start to see how this is going to go. But I will do it anyway. I'm moving over to the darks that are here. So you can see that there are some buildings back here. There's kind of a group of buildings. There's light building, and then there's like slightly darker building. So I'm actually coming in here. 
and sketching. I don't have to, I don't, uh, what's nice is we, we don't see that much. So back here, I'm gonna darken this to a kind of medium dark. It's definitely lighter than this, right? Than this thing in the front. Definitely lighter than that, but it's definitely darker than this. So now I'm kind of playing around with my midtones a little bit. Um, and then here, there's these kind of cool reflections of dark around light areas from these buildings in the street. So you have a couple ways of doing that. And then at this point, I think it's probably a good idea to give yourself an edge to the street. So you've got a, a between, you can go between the street and the sidewalk. You guys are really doing well at this. I want to tell you, this is amazing. I think you're getting an understanding. You might even not know how much you're getting and understanding these points. So you see now I have like this light area, this dark area. Um, I might go a little bit lighter here. I may put in windows, a few. But remember, those are going to have to go. Also, each of those lines is going to have to go towards the vanishing point. <laughs> I may just skip it. Um, and then I can kind of go in and out and add lights. Oh, you know, I really need my electric laser for now. There we go. Yeah, a little pencil. I can go back in and add these lights, right? That are even. I can go back in here. So you see how I start to add pieces here. I can kind of go and then over here. So on this side, it's a little bit darker. Is actually kind of a cool um, window, kind of a, a sort of doorway that's kind of so. If I want to, I can add that in or not. You can see I can make decisions, and now I'm coming here to this building, right? So you see how I'm kind of adding in my light and my darks. As I see them, totally lost my. Oh, yep, that's about right there. Right, see how I'm like able to go dark, right? And I'm like, oh, I need to go a little bit darker. So I'm kind of adding in my lights and my darks as I see them. I don't have to do everything. There's a kind of neat, and you'll see uh, the limit of charcoal is that there's only so dark you can go. You actually can't go. There's a level of dark you'll want to go that you can't really go. That's the one frustration with charcoal. And it's the same on this side. I mean, now I'm going to go in and add in right this here. Now there's a street lamp, sorry, also has a shadow up here and kind of medium there these are these ones aren't on interesting so basically you can go back and forth in the different areas adding as much detail as you like there's this area in the front here it's kind of a right i want to get character here
you see how you start to kind of move around and deal with edges, adding in kind of whatever detail, whatever level of detail you want. Taking in elements, moving them in whatever ways you feel like you want to. This will turn out to be a cool, once you've got all these pieces and you get to start making decisions about how much structure. Right now, maybe I do a couple thin, a couple thick. I start paying a little bit more attention to the size of these. It's darker, back here. See how that starts to, your city starts to come together. I like how these trees kind of come up in. Yeah, I, at first I was like, oh man, this looks so hard, they're gonna hate me. Then I thought, no, nope, there's a lesson here. And kind of how, notice that some of your lights kind of go, because this is a street it's reflection, some of your lights go this way. So having a couple of these. All right, now I'm gonna get super, don't get jealous, it's just a gift. This is an electronic eraser. It lets me go a lot harder. <laughs> right? A gift from, from my good friend Jessica Pryor, who sometimes comes to class. So I can come in here and kind of, yeah, you'll want one. <laughs> I think I just have to use it. She used to use it in class, and I'd be like, what is that noise? See how I'm starting to pull out the lights a little bit more? In certain places, I can do these guys. Look at how, oh my God, it's awesome looking. And it's not even that like, I'm gonna keep that there, but I'm gonna use it to sharpen the line. Yeah, this is bad. So you see, when we go back to the very beginning of where we start, you've had a pretty good description of how we start to make things feel, um, of how we start to, uh, create, to, to sort of create a sense of depth, right? And then the details are kind of up to you. Uh, I was, uh, I'm, I'm, as I, I think I told you guys, I'm the, I, I run a, or I run an organization called Portland Open Studios, which does an annual art studio tour. So uh, I've been interviewing artists and uh, writing them up for a web page and for publicity purposes. And, you know, the, I, we have this wonderful hyper-realist painter and he's like, it's an obsession with detail. And he really put it well. He's like, you know, you just get this obsession with how detailed you want to go depends on how much obsession you have with like detail, right? It just keeps getting, but you start with the bigger shapes and then you get smaller. You know, it just depends on your obsession for detail, how much you're going to get into it. I'm adding in these kind of reflective lights because I like them and might add some windows. Shit. It's okay. You can help. Right? I might add some windows in there. I might decide, oh, that's all too much. Take them out or soften them. Um, you're, it just depends on your level of your, you know, how much time you're willing. It's just an obsession for detail. It's knowing how to start the how to start and build. 
but the detail part really comes later. I never, I'm not one of those artists that plans out um, that plans out what what I want to do uh, or how my painting is going to look at the end. I like, I kind of prefer to be nicely surprised and that kind of depends upon my focus, upon the size, upon there's a lot of things that go into like where a painting goes and I'm always just blown away by, oh my God. Right, like look at how that looks. And this process is magical to me. It's just a magical process. Like I can just put one shape in, right? And look at how that changes things. I never really know how my paintings are gonna come up. I love how this kind of has this sort of, there's a like tight white here and then it gets kind of softer. Yeah, I don't know, like, I'm just like, ah, look at that. It's a miracle. <laughs> oh yeah, Bettina is starting to look good. Oh wait, sorry, that was now. Oh uh, no, that looks good. B, this is starting to look good. You guys are starting to come together. So now you get to kind of work, oh. right? The details to see how much you want to get in. Got about 20 minutes. So let's see, I want, I know this is a little uncomfortable, but I wanna see if you can get to something that you would call kind of a finished drawing in the next 20 minutes. So if you want help, go ahead and send it over. But more likely, I think you're at a point where you can start problem solving where those, uh, you know, what you need to do to kind of quote unquote, I want you to think in 20 minutes, this drawing's gonna be finished. I mean, sure, if you want to, you can keep going. I'm not gonna ever tell anybody to stop, but I think the idea of this exercise is if I only have this limited amount of time, what can I do? What do I have in life? What can I do in 20 minutes that can make this deal finish? That's a good practice too. For those of you who take figure drawing on Friday mornings now, or Friday afternoons or evenings, depending on where you are, um, figure drawing is up an excellent. The first exercise we do is a one minute drawing of the figure. 
So it's good to get to a point of, let's see, Jackie. Oh, Diana. Oh yeah, Diana, he's coming along so nice. I think what Ooh. I think what I need to work on are the paws and the front legs a little bit. Yeah, I agree. And I think it's then it's pretty much done. Yeah. So Jackie, I'd say I like how this is going. Um, I think bring up. So what's let's see, I'm trying to see how to say this. Notice how much dark is here between the lines for the street and the wheels and the license plate. You kind of mm -hmm. miss that, right? So get that shape. Focus on getting that shape back in. Yeah, I'm actually having trouble getting the dark to go dark, but yeah, well, just you just got to push hard and do the best yeah. you can. Yeah, it's the na nature of the medium. Um, yeah. However, it looks pretty good. And then I would say, you know, there's some areas you can work here. Yep. Work in here. Uh, soften this a little bit by putting in a few eraser lines this way. Yep. Yep. But uh, nice, and and then uh, way more dark up here. Yeah, uh, that's what I'm doing now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. funny how you can really see it when you take a picture of it, right? Yeah. Yeah, Diana, I'd say he's definitely done. And and in a weird way, you could stop here. You know, the only thing I would do with the pause is maybe soften this line up here. I kind of yeah. like the pause yeah. sort of sharp because they're coming toward. Like I kind of like the pause. That they are unfocused. Yeah, well, they they're blocky, which yeah. I think kind like, of everything else is kind of softer, and then this is this blocky part. And I think because that's coming towards us, that actually works really well. All right. Yeah. So the only try just softening this line. Uh, okay. And this line a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Maybe this one, bring that little light blue in, so it's not quite so strong there. And you may be, you might may find you're done. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, check it off the list, send it out to your agent in Sweden and keep going. Uh, this is for my dog tr dog oh, training. Dog trainer. <laughs> <laughs> the trading economy, right? Right, the barter, we love it. I traded paintings for a car. It's the most amazing thing ever. Oh, wow, how many paintings yeah. do you have to do for that? Uh, three. Wow. Right? Big one. And what I think is really, yeah, uh, two big ones, uh, one big one, one really big one, and uh, like a 24 by 48 inch, and two smaller ones, like like 18 by 24s. And this is I presumably think, a secondhand car. It is. It is. It's a, it's a, it was a, it's like a 2006 Ford Festiva. Uh, Ford That's Festiva. pretty cool. It's a great car though. And I, what I'm amazed at is the, the woman who I traded it to is like, are you sure you've got a good deal? And I'm like, yes, I got a good deal. I have paintings coming out of my ears. I do not have a car. <laughs> oh, you didn't paint them for her. You she, you just gave them what she liked. Yes, yeah, she had what she wanted. Yeah, she took what she wanted. Um, this is my gallerist in North Portland. She runs a shop called Salty Teacup. So she's always watching what I'm doing and seeing what she, you know, she has a lot of my work. Uh, some of which we do by barter, some of which you, but yeah, I thought it was That's really pretty cute. cool. It's pretty great feeling to have a car. I don't know, look at this. I don't know, this rabbit is not quite right. Can you uh, send me a picture? I, I see. It looks cute. I think, it I looks think cute. it's the edges. I didn't do wet on wet, and so it doesn't have blended edges. Can't you add them in? Can't you just go in with your brush and water and kind of rub it? Right. Yeah. I mean, and it's not as bad as I've had these problems with rabbits before. And I think now. I've made that maybe a bit too dark. Yeah. I think I probably made the neck shadow too strong. Now it looks like he's got a necklace. <laughs> it's all light, it's all edges, right? All edges. <sighs> Because once I made the eyes very dark, the other darks needed. Oh, I don't to... know, Sandra. This looks really great. Um, but 
but I see what you mean. I would just take a little bit more. Um, it's adorable though. Good. Oh, good look eye. at that eye. Yeah. Well, we oh, know and the, that the eye. And the fur is perfectly blended. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I would just say yeah. we um, taken a little bit of burnt sienna and blue or whatever it is that you put here and kind of push it out a slightly darker here on the back edge. And then I would like kind of- Where, Leah, where? Let here. me put you in. Okay. And then I would tighten and darken some of the details in the ear that, ear that's coming. Yeah. yeah, that's what I was thinking, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I think, but it's it's excellent. I feel like you're getting somewhere. I appreciate yeah. your, uh, I'm not so sure, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? This is really great process because you are figuring it out, right? Like how you... Well, I don't, either. because I'm learning, I don't have an established style yet. So I almost do something different each time. And well, sometimes I feel a bit lost. You're not going to have a style for, you know, don't worry about your style. No, but you know, with pastels, I'm... A, it's yeah, it took, years, it took you years to develop that, right? But not really. I mean, yes, a little bit. Not as I, I, I don't. I haven't. I didn't watch as many videos. It was clearer to me what you had to do. Was right. fair. But so many ways to. Yeah. To go about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you're on the experimental stage. So don't get too caught. You exactly. Know, um, my I do cityscape paintings, and I've been painting them since the very beginning of my painting career, twenty years ago. My second painting was a cityscape painting. Um, but my seascapes are constantly evolving. They are changing a lot from year to year. So let it be that what you know what I mean? Also let get that that's like, and, and I'm, and it's a process at this stage, just do everything and you'll see, it'll come to you what you like to do. Yes. I think eventually, um, it just comes. I, that's why I'm saying, don't worry about style. It will just come worry about the form, Oh, right? <laughs> worry about form and like and mark making and all of that stuff and know that your style will just come from that say hi to to little monkey <laughs> let's see oh. hold on hold on let me spotlight he's got a face bigger than yours yeah i know sunny say hi okay hi sunny he's like ah. i am you know don't you know when she's gonna want to with her mouth open like ah she's like an adorable hyper, yes. I love my mommy. I love my mommy. And I eat my daddy. And I eat my daddy. <laughs> think about what you can do in two minutes. I think she needs to go out. She starts getting like this. Oh, yes. I to go out, so I'm gonna take her. You might still be here when I get back with this. Yes. We might. We're down at 10 or one or five or six or whatever. Oh, Bettina, that's coming along. So uh, really um, work, get rid of these, uh, the lights that are lining up down here and re-darken the shadows. Cause now it's easy to get too dark, right? But really look, all of this is dark and it's just these little tiny lines. And there's no lines really, this is just a line to show you where the edge of the shadow is. Right. I see that. So get dark down here, that's gonna help. Right here particularly, you got too light, right? And so notice how that makes your car look wonky. Also, this I it, can't get my charcoal to get any darker though. It really feels like I mean I can get rid of that line. Switch charcoals and lay thick. Kind of lean into it. If you want to, if you've got any compressed charcoal, now would be the time to try it, right? Kind of scrub it in over. See how I'm doing that here? Yeah, I, I really can't get well, I mean the only way I can do is lighten around it, it feels like. But yeah, yeah, or use a different, I uh, don't, you, it won't work to lighten around it. Use a different, just do your best. Anyway, just do your best. I think I'm limited by my medium here, or just the, I don't know, I can't do it. Use the, uh, use the corner, take a different piece of charcoal. Okay. Right, take a different piece of charcoal, break the edge off, use the corner, kind of scrub more. 
work on different ways. I'm doing it with the same stuff. Oh, B, that's great. Nice. <laughs> so B, I just want you to remember that every window, and I can uh -huh. see, do this right at the top of the window. Goes oh yeah, it goes to the middle. And the but not to the middle to where the street ends, right? Oh, okay. That's not the middle. That's right. a, every single. I want you to check and correct every single. You just have to come here. It all goes to where these two lines meet. meet. Right? So if you're going to add windows in, all of them need to follow that. You said that. But Knight, are you pleased with yourself? Yeah. You know, this one was kind of hard, but. Of course. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> of course. I don't know. It was. Of course it was hard. And also I get darker in here, this section. All of that, if you look here, you'll see all of this is darker. You have it kind of the same. Yeah. Right? It's really less yeah. here and it's darker here. It is hard to get it really dark, especially because I'm right-handed. So my elbow just keeps erasing that side. I'm right-handed too. Uh, yeah, I get you. It's lucky handed people also have that. Jackie, that's looking great. Aren't you guys pleased with yourselves? Look at this. This is great. I want you to get that some of these things. Oh, Cyrus, wonderful. These are great, you guys. I love these. Oh my gosh. I'm feeling like a proud mom. Yours looks like a painting almost. It's beautiful. Well, mine is a, mine is a, here, I'll show you the painting upon which, that I did. Here, here's the painting I did. Oh. Wow, I love this. I love the light, the green and yeah, yellow. Green, green and the black and the purplish in there and the reddish. Yeah. And the, it's very and luminous. And little hits of paint, little hits of Hints of hot pink. Magenta and pink, it looks good. Thank I love it. So you can see how these build, right? Like how one builds this uh, concept. Thank you guys. But that's where we're that's where we're going. Now, now I'm teaching you drawing in this particular way because I'm a painter. So I'm not as obsessively interested in the detail. I'm, I'm an impressionist painter. So I'm not as obsessively interested in the details as other painters might be. But um, there are, uh, you know, but but like everything starts like this, and it ends. And you'll see, Sandra, this thing about style that the way I use my charcoal is very similar to the way I use the mark making I do with my paintbrush. That was really the aha moment for me when I went, oh, I can draw the way I paint. Was able to draw. Mm -hmm. that for me, was helpful um, to be able to go. My mark making comes across whatever I'm doing. It absolutely comes across. And uh, don't give up on this medium. You can use the corners. You can use a different piece of charcoal. Not all charcoal is equal. Um, with that Bob's Redwood, some of it is bet some of it is kind of stiffer than others. So it's um, the idea of this is to kind of understand how paintings and drawings get put together. What are the pieces that we start with? And what you see is without too much detail, I can create recreate the image and the emotions of this by paying attention to the quadrants the major lights, right? And the darks. And then I don't need as much as I think as, you know, I don't really need all that much. I suppose I shouldn't call this class drawing made easy, huh? <laughs> I say <laughs> drawing made doable. <laughs> Or made possible. I made possible. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. You're all, everybody's doing it. Y'all did it. 
and you did great. Oh, we can see. Is that dragon sitting there looking out? Uh, that's Leon, the escape artist, the escape artist. Here, check it out. You can see Mr. Trouble looking out. Leon, back. say hello. Hello, you naughtiness. He's like, whatever. I think he got a bit spooked because uh, by the time I decided to go finally find him, I called him and he was kind of almost swearing to himself, kind of grumbling, but he wasn't clearly scared by me because he came to me. But he was kind of swearing to himself. I can't get over how beautiful this bar is. It's so pretty. Isn't he pretty? He's a pretty one. Those are bangles. Okay, I think. Uh... All right, you guys, I'm going to take this off. We're going to stop. I'm going to stop the recording.